All right, good morning. This is the morning algorithm for week one, day three. And we wanna just reiterate what conditionals are. Uh, we have var is sunny equals true. That's a variable, we t-diagram it. We know how to do that. Uh, we have all these here, temperature equal 45, is raining false, what to bring, equaling the string I should bring. If is sunny, what to bring, plus equals sunglasses. If temperature is less than 50, what to bring, you add to what to bring. You say plus equals the string, a quote, and then at the end, you console log what to bring here after you check these three ifs. Prepare to down count. You have a for loop. In the for loop, you have an if statement. If i is not equal to two, do this else console log ignition. Count positives is the last one. You have this variable called count positives equals zero, var numbers three, four, negative two, seven, 16, negative eight, and zero. And then there's a console log. There are, you add to the console log the count positives and then the last quote positive values. So there we go. Uh, should be easy enough for you guys at this point. Let's go ahead and break out into groups. Okay, welcome back everyone. We'll go ahead and uh, present our answers now. Let's go through this, uh, each answer with a different group. So who would like to present for the first one? I can go first. Okay. Uh, here. Um. So, <clears throat> this is our first algorithm. I put the uh, problem on the left here. Um, I also color coded the variables just because it's a little easier for me that way. Um, our first variable is sunny. I said the value is true. The variable temperature is 45. So we put the value at 45. The raining is a uh, variable is raining right here, which is false. And then the ver the variable uh, I should bring, or what to bring, sorry, what to bring is I should bring. So the first thing the function asks is, if it's sunny, we look at the value, the variable up here is sunny, the value is true. So we're going to uh, bring sunglasses, we're going to console log sunglasses right here, because it's sunny. Wait, hold if on. Oh, sorry. We're not going to console log sunglasses. We're going to say, oh, we're going to add it to what to bring. Yeah, sorry. You're right. We bring we add it to what to bring here. Yeah, because this is the plus equal. Right. OK. <clears throat> if the temperature is less than 50, then we will add to the what to bring a coat. We check the temperature, which is 45. 45 is less than 50. So this is true. And then if it is raining, we would add an umbrella. So if it's true, is it true right now? For 
the, it, for it raining, it's not true. So temperature the, put, less than fifty. I mean, yes, the temperature is less than fifty. So we were then to add to what to bring a coat. Mm -hmm. A so, coat. Yep, and that is true. Yep. So you have the and I I like how you have the rows like that lined up. True, true, true. Okay, continue. Sorry. Yeah, and then if it's raining, um, which we would check raining is false, but it would be a bring an umbrella if it was true. Um, since what to bring is outside of the curly brackets here, even though this the raining is not true, we would still add and a smile to what to bring. Um, because there's no if or else statements here. So does the computer would just read this? So then we'd console log what to bring, which was I should bring sunglasses, a coat, and a smile, which we console log here. I should put the thing right there. But... Nice. Nicely done. Interesting colors. How do you get a black uh, spreadsheet? That's interesting. Yeah, I like uh, I like darker backgrounds, so I just I just highlighted it all and used the paint bucket to change it here to black, and then I just want I changed every variable to a different color, so that way it was like when I saw if sunny, then it's like oh it's red, so it's true. I can just look at there real quick. Okay, nice and done. All right, um, well done, group one. For question two, who would like to go? Uh, I can go. Nice. Let's do that. All right. We've got prepare for down count. Um, so it starts with our variable I is at 10. Um, it's going to go until it's at one, which is bigger than zero, and it's going to keep going down by one. All right. If I is not equal to two, then we console log I. So we're going to go from 10 to nine to eight to seven to six to five to four to three and then to two. And then uh, we're going to go down here to console log that uh, ignition. And then the for loop is broken, and then we go to lift off after that. Nice. Okay, so did you T diagram it? Uh, over here, sort of, sort of T diagram. Okay. All right. Nice. Nice look there. Okay. And for your uh, problem three? I can go. Okay. Thank you, Joan. Uh, all right. Um, so for problem three, we had to um, write the code to count the number of positives in this array. So uh, we added a for loop and an eighth loop. So for any uh, value of i less than the number of the array length here, which is seven, and I have that long here, then you'll keep adding one um, up until you've, oh, you've examined all the values of the array. So in this case, uh, if your value of i is zero, starting off zero, then, um, and, and zero is less than the number, the number, of values in the array, which is seven, then we have a variable x where you store the index of that value i. So that's where I've logged all of these values. So index zero will give you three. Three is greater than or equal to zero, making it a positive. So then you have a variable count positives where you store um, uh, an additional value here, one. So then you look at, um, I'll just, so for every value 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, which is less than 7, then you have an index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 
And so if your first value is three, then your second value, which is index of one is four, four is greater than zero. So then you add one more to the count positives becomes two. Um, then your um, index two of the array is negative two. So you don't count a positive. So you skip that. Um, and then you have number, uh, so you have index three of the array, which is seven. Seven is greater than zero. So you count another positive that gives you, I believe it was two. Um, and then you go to the next one, index of four in the array gives you 16. 16 is a positive. So you add one more, you get, uh, was that, am I correct? Yeah, I think it's four actually, sorry, my bad, four. And then um, uh, index of five in the array gives you negative eight. So you don't count a positive there. Um, you go to the next one, index of six gives you zero, zero is a positive greater than or equal to zero. Um, so you count your positive one more time and um, you end up with a value of five here. So you essentially end up consologging. There are five positive values. I see. Okay. Thank you. Well done, group three. Any questions, Benjamin? I got a question um, on that last one. We got, um, I forgot what, I don't have it pulled up, but we got four for the simple fact that zero isn't a positive and we're counting positives. So it wouldn't be if I is uh, greater than or equal to zero, it would be just greater than zero because zero is the absence of anything. So positives would be above it. Okay, let's bring it up one more time to see the definite answer. John, would you share your screen again? If X is greater than zero, instead of greater than or equal to, which just wouldn't count um, numbers index six. So it would be count positive four. So is the problem on the platform with the equal sign or did you guys accidentally add that? Is that on the algorithm? Yeah, on the platform with the equal sign. Then yes, because zero is technically not a positive and we're counting positive. So if it equals zero, then I guess if you want zero to equal zero, then sure. But if you want to count positives, then I zero see. is not a positive. Yeah, I see. All right. Okay. So with this one, we had to build it. Okay. So, um, uh, Mary, so you have to slightly augment this because if um, X is equal to zero, you don't want to count positives. If it's zero, then zero is not a positive. So we don't, we don't want to count positives at that point on line 49 and 50. So zero is a positive integer. No, it's it's not positive or negative. It's It's just zero. Yeah, like Ben was saying, zero is the absence of a value. It is just okay. an empty number. So it's not positive or negative. Okay. So when it's greater, yeah, the, when it's greater than zero, count positives. So from the T diagram on line 45 in the middle, there where it says count positive zero. Uh... It's okay. We don't have to go through and correct this all now. Um, but just maybe redo this T chart on your own time, but it, we would have to, yeah, do just, that's the only slight change that we would make to that answer is that when X is greater than zero, not greater than or equal to zero. But good okay. job. Very, very good attempt. Benjamin, did you want to show yours? Your answer? I didn't I didn't write it. Uh, okay. my partner did. 
Oh, okay. I'm good. Okay, who who is that? Mike. Mike. I just had it uh, plotted out in VS Code. I didn't think to so, write the code in the spreadsheet. Yeah, okay. what what she did was <clears throat> that was correct. How she had it at the mm -hmm. end. So all she had That's to do exactly was take it. out that equals on the if statement. Yeah, that was a very nice and clean look of a presentation. It was just one slight little error there. But other than that, it was well well thought out and well diagrammed. Okay, so that ends this morning's algorithm session. I'll go ahead and stop the recording.